Hello everyone, I'm Life on the Holes. This is Sam, Ross's son. Down here for the next four weeks, kind of subbed in for Zach after he left to go to New Zealand with Ellen for a year. I think he got so sick of dealing with the electrics that he uh, booked a trip and made sure it was far enough away that he couldn't just get dragged back in. Check out this video, there's heaps of cool stuff. If you're a Sparky, you'll probably cringe, but for everyone else, super interesting. Pretty sure we're ready to go on the electrics and uh, keep putting the idea of launching in the next month, but keep getting a bit of pushback on that. Watch it to the end, there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Things are getting really serious here. I'm actually installing, or at least dry fitting all of our start batteries. We want to try and get our engine gauges going today if we can. So the last two days for me has been about getting the engines and all the earths and the live wires all lined up and ready for not an engine power up but certainly a gauge power up to make sure we got everything right dark batteries have arrived these are marine pro 780 amp uh, they're fairly serious little cranking batteries i've pretty much got uh, one on each side here so these are separate to our house 800 lithiums and obviously they're agms so we want to make sure that they're totally isolated and separate to the house as it stands i'll be using solar to charge these on a separate mppt controller and then we'll have a parallel for them uh, to keep the voltage regular on each side but yeah i'm going to put them in here going to do some work down here on the port side got to get a couple of holes drilled for the terminals and if you have a look here all of the cabling's in now we've basically got everything running through here all of the power to the start motor and uh and essentially the whole thing's ready to run really and uh we just realized you have to take the alternators off that i put on now twice to get what was the wire we had to put in uh temperature sensor the temperature sensor wire is buried in the bowel of this motor right in under there come to the conclusion is that the belt cover sucks balls <laughs> yeah get rid of it the belt cover and the alternator cover we were actually told today a friend of mine came in to have a look at the boat he goes that belt cover is going to drive you insane so it's going to become a bit of artwork in my garage and zach and i have just plugged in and it's live it's not going to start but we have no got some pretty exciting things to look at which is this oh look at that Yanmar, we've got that's better <laughs> that's all better. right so what are we trying to do here I mean, oh well first i want to get auxiliary stuff ah it's probably because i've done this one second oh so we've got 23 degrees Safety switch is uh, yeah, not. It is in open loop. No, it seems to be closed. What are you testing for me? Well, down here. We're trying to find the ignition wire, basically. Well, there's. I know where I can get one from over there in the fuse box. That's not a problem. But there's also this. Oh, there we go. It's coming out the back. All right. Let's see what we've got. That's I do. No, that was millivolts. No. Um. Let me find a good earth. There. That's obviously not a good earth. We just put that to the negative battery terminal. That'll give us a true reading. Oh, sorry, wrong reading. There you go, 12.5. Now, the instruction said the installation of the Belmont regulators will be easy. <laughs> not when you haven't really got clear instructions when you're trying to link up two Balmar regulators with a center fielder. It's a totally confusing thing. And I mate, this guy has spent all afternoon getting this right. And you reckon you got it right? Yeah, we got it right. I just need to get a wire from the engine's factory wiring harness um, that's on the ignition side, so it only gets power when you press the engine on button. Yep. Um, the thing that may be confusing is the smart sense regulators that go on the back of these, they've got uh, two studs that come out. One's the field wire, one's the ignition wire. Yep. Um, field wire, that's fine. We know where that goes. That goes onto the external regulator. But that ignition pin didn't really make sense to me where that went because I knew it didn't go up to the regulators here from the alternator and it didn't show it on any of the wiring diagrams. But it didn't say that that is for if you're using the internal regulator. That's right. In the alternator, <laughs> then you put the engine's wiring harness ignition wire to there. Yeah. What we need to do is get 
that wire wherever we're going to find, find it. Find ignition, yeah. And put it not to this alternator, but straight to our regulator, which I knew I had to do that. I just didn't know what I had to do on the back of this. And the answer was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah, already, we don't have to use that, all done. that ignition pin. Because yeah. this is an, alt, uh, an extra alternator, we don't have to do it anyway. Correct. So, yeah. so right. Okay. Anyway, Glad we got to that. To <laughs> Holy girly. That is one complicated setup in there. Absolutely unbelievable. Well done, mate. You, yeah. you brain teased that. Thank God for YouTube as well. We found a channel which had which had an install. And uh, yeah, we're sort of there. We're getting there. Absolutely in the world to live here. Just... He's just uh, made a major safety consideration here. We're just going to get rid of all the shit that we don't need on the front of this engine, like alternator covers and belt covers because we've got to access the back of the alternators and it's nearly impossible without removing all that crap. Oh. I put them all back on just recently. Yeah, well, sorry. It's sorry, mate, it's coming back off. That's all right, mate. <laughs> oh, has it got to come off totally? Yep. Oh, bugger. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So these guys are going to become artwork and I might hold on to them because if I ever sell the boat, I'll put them back on to make it look like it's all nice and flash, but for now, I don't really want them on there because they're going to be a nightmare. Back in his hole. Back in my hole. It's a new hole. The wire isn't long enough. That's annoying. All right, so I've jammed that in there. If I probe this on the ignition, it should power up this regulator, so. Oh. Yes. Yes, brother. Awesome. 618 Belmar yeah. regulator. Right, eh? so the way this is programmed is with a magnetic reed switch on that red dot there. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. So that's yep. our... Uh... That's bulk charge. We'll have temperature sensing. So then we're going to have to go through and see what all these are and program yeah, yeah. Well, I've got a cheat sheet. I so saw just that. download it. Yeah. We can just go through, but then we need the battery specifications. Yeah. And we need the temperature should on that alternator should be around 120 degrees. Yep. And we need to hook up the battery temp sensors as well as well as yeah, the yeah. voltage sense. So yeah. there's still a couple of things to hook up. Yeah, that's brilliant. But at least we know they power up. And this is simulating the ignition switch. This wire I'm holding on is when you press ignition, that terminal will get power and they'll power up. So at least we know that the that, so that's where's that working. lead coming from? That power lead. Where's that hooked up? To? Uh, that's just hooked up to the constant power, which it right. feeds from the house battery into this uh, 15 amp fuse up here. So it should be on the ignition, so it shuts off when the motor goes off. Correct. So essentially, when you click ignition off, yep, they power it's off. off. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, well, there you go, mate. All there that you go. five hours of of stripping seven core wire yesterday yeah. has paid off. Yeah. Working conditions have improved dramatically. I know. <laughs> Ross has given me a little foam mat and a fan. So now we're finally on par with the factories in Ho Chi Minh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not squatting though. Yeah, oh, I'll put okay. it Here we go. There you go. We're in Vietnam. There you go. This is, this is how all humans should work. Squatting <laughs> rather than on their knees. Because I cannot handle being on my knees anymore. This boat is going to kill my knees. But the most important thing right now is to get these Balmar regulators, these guys here, programmed. So that yep. when he goes, <laughs> they're just done. So when I start the motors, everything's going to work, isn't it? That's the plan. Everything's going to work. Yeah, it's going to be good. Right out. So we'll get these working. So that's these. I'll leave these in so you know which ones are the ignition. Yeah, so I just need to run them to up to the engine gauges and we're all good. Correct. Oh, you look, it's on. All right. Oh, no. Let me just go and check the other side. Oh, the center field that came on, I haven't seen that before. Yeah, you know the other side's on because I think it's got... Okay, so what's happening now? It's just scrolling through. All right, all right. We've got the manual. We're going to RTFM. We'll read the epic manual Yeah. for a change. It's the first time Zach's read the manual. <laughs> he usually just wings it. I can't do that. It's not winging it, it's using no, no, prior using knowledge. Prior knowledge. Here we go. He's Here's done it. a lot of this sort of stuff. Maybe not this particular one, but he's done this before. I have programmed bound miles, but I've programmed lots of other... Well, the other side's actually working, so we know this side's working. 
very, very happy to see that happen. I'm going to tidy all this wiring up at some point. Not maybe not this wiring, but this cupboard is going to be a no-hand zone. Belt load manager is zero. The uh, bulk. Yep. CU. Uh, that's calculated voltage. Target. Which is fourteen point two. 22 degrees for the battery, 20 degrees for the alternator. Yeah, alright, okay. cool. So we know what so they're all functioning properly, yep. Yeah. So we've got so that. I was, I was just saying to Ross, um, the center fielder has the inputs for each of the regulator's dash lamp outputs. Yep. Yeah. Um, which pretty much just shows when it's on or if it's not working, so you just know by looking at a light on the dash that your regulator's yep, on yep, while your engines yep, are running. That, yep. um, and so the outputs come off the center fielder, which then would run to dash lamps, like you can see in this nice little drawing here. Yep, yep. But I was saying that something we could do in the future is instead of running that to a dash lamp, um, we could run that to one of the digital inputs or one of the inputs uh, on the Serbo GX uh, and then program them as uh, regulator, alternator regulator yep. port and starboard. Yep. Um, and because that's all interconnected, we could set up an alarm for it. Yep. Um, so we could have a pop up on our MFD yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. know and, and have it labeled uh, alternator port, alternator starboard, yep. just to eliminate extra uh, lights and things like that. It can be super clear. But we're not going to worry about that until, we're not worry about until it gets that back yet. from New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, that, that I can do. When I might we're, just hook up a little light so I can see it. Hook up a little light, light yeah. yeah, and um, we can do that when we're sitting on a okay. mooring at some point. Yeah, sounds good. But that's just, a beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we're going to be having a beer at some point we on this will. boat. Right, cool. That's good. Right. Once the regulator is on and scrolling, Touch and hold the magnetic end of the programming screwdriver to the red dot on the regulator as described above. Continue to hold the magnet to the red dot, the letters PRO will appear on the LED. Continue to hold the red dot, the letters BA will appear. Continue to hold the magnetic to the red dot, the LED display will begin to scroll through the various battery codes. When the desired battery code is displayed, release the magnet. What we're doing, there is advanced programming for these which goes in and you can adjust all of the parameters for um, the float voltage, float time, uh, absorption voltage and time and all of that. We don't have any of those things from the battery manufacturer. So they do have the presets in here, which is the basic programming, uh, which, is, which seems pretty easy. So we're gonna try that now. So this is just on scrolling through all the current values. Apparently we just press and hold Pro, it says Pro, which means it's entering programming mode. BA, so that's a uh, battery type. Now it's scrolling through the different battery types. So it's scrolling through FDC, gel, whatever that is, AGL, OPS. That's a flooded battery. Next one will be LiPo or, yeah, let go. We've had to do a bit of searching, but I'm just trying to reset the temperature thresholds um, in the Bowman regulators for the batteries because standard, maybe because batteries are usually in the, in the engine bay, but the low temperature threshold is 32 degrees. Now, yeah. those batteries are probably never really going to be over 32 degrees, um, but what will happen if the batteries are under 32 degrees, which they will be, yeah. the regulators will compensate for that yeah. and actually lower the uh, current yeah. charging the batteries. Yeah. We, we don't want that no. because that's going to be pretty much all the time. Yeah. So I'm going to lower that to something more realistic like 20 yeah. and I've just gone to the... Um, so that's the minimum battery temperature. Before it starts compensating, yeah. 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 Um, and based off the batteries we've got from iTech World, straight off the um, spec sheet for those batteries, Optimal charge temp range, zero to 45 degrees. Yeah, okay. so, we're, so we're gonna drop that right down to about 20, 15 degrees, something yeah, like that. Um, which means at those temperatures, which will normally be, when we start the engines, we'll be getting yeah, max yeah. charge. So if we were to take this boat to the Arctic, which we're never going to. Correct. And we had like this minus 20 outside temperature. Yeah. Then I'd have to lower that to zero. Mm, no, because at that point, 
you would want compensation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, because yeah. it's optimal starts at zero. It's zero. So I'd lower, it. I'd lower it just to just to compensate. We're never going to be that cold. No. No. Nah, 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 not in Australia not. anyway. Not in the. You'll have the heater on before yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've had a bit of a, a bit of a long run. Zach's been working through this. I've been listening, and I'm sort of starting to understand it a little bit. But we've Ross, certainly checked you, some. You, you've got it. We've checked some parameters, right? Eh? Yeah. What are we going to change? So uh, we've written down the things that it says here. What all the defaults are? Yep. A couple of things like absorption voltage. Um, the default is thirteen point nine. Yeah. We can go to fourteen point four. Yeah. Absorption time is eighteen minutes. Um, the battery specs say one hundred and eighty minutes. Yep. Um, so we can change that. Float voltage uh, defaults thirteen thirteen point five. Our low voltage, we can go a lot lower because we're running lithiums. So we can go down to 11.8. Uh, and then just the temperature threshold for the alternator will go a bit higher. Yep. And then the battery low cutoff, we're going to go down a bit because our optimal charge temps anywhere between 0 to 45 degrees for our batteries. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to drop that right down. So oh. even in lower temperatures, we can get max yeah. current. Now, one thing, one thing we read... One thing we noticed yesterday after I bought all the Valmar ones is there's another brand called Wake Speed, which a lot of people are using now. Apparently, it's a lot easier to program. I guess you can do it all with Bluetooth and the like. We can do that with this. I can actually buy a Bluetooth adapter that will basically go into an NMEA, I imagine does, and uh, make it a lot less clunky. But I like the idea of this magnetic reed switch. You just show them that thing that you got in your hand. That's all that it is. It is basically a magnetic reed switch, and essentially the... The reed is encased, I guess it's some sort of epoxy, clear epoxy that's encased in. Yep. So there's no tampering needed and uh, nothing really can go wrong once it's set. It can't be adjusted, even if, if we stuck a big magnet near it, we sort of need that reed switch to do the job. Correct. But yeah, so the whole thing's done with this little pen with a magnetic on the end. And uh, once it's done, it's done. We don't really need to touch it again. The good thing really, is really it's nice. um, solid state as well. So if power, if you just if we ripped all the wires off this thing, yeah. All those settings would actually stay in there so yeah, yeah. if you lock this away in a cupboard yeah. um that's never going to change yeah, you're never exactly. actually going to accidentally change it which exactly. you don't want so. and the other thing that we've done too and as per the recommendation we've mounted it outside of the engine room because i have seen a couple where they've been inside the engine room and the and the epoxy yeah the plastic that it's encased in can actually crack now it probably doesn't affect it but you don't want that happening so it's totally removed from the engine room it's obviously separated with foam and insulation so lots of things going on here today mate we yeah, came in for right, an hour man. i think we've been here an hour and a half but it's been a good hour and a half lunchtime. yeah it is lunchtime all right so we're going to do do some uh, do some final adjustments and do the other side and go i had some complaints about the working conditions so i've improved the working conditions here yeah yeah, what was the what was the improvement? Well, uh, Ross is giving me a little bit of foam to kneel on now, so uh, <laughs> we've been kneeling on this razor sharp raised lip down there for the last what two years? Yeah, just cutting ourselves open. It's yep. Great fun. Anyway, so what's happening now, mate? Well, I've just uh, rewired the anchor solenoid and all ah. the switch and everything, right. and I'm um, going to turn everything on now, and uh, we're going to see. If the anchor does oh, anchor things. Well, I've seen those lights come on. Uh, first that turn on the... It's still running on one battery here. Circuit breaker's on. Right on, we're going to go for a walk up the front. Yeah. Zach's going through the window. I'll go for a walk up the front. You can see if it actually works. You can probably blow something here. Well, we've got a fuse. Well, just make sure there's no plastic wrapped in that wind, in that gypsy, won't you? Should be right. The other side. All right. Oh! Oh, no way. Look at that. Yes, mate. Yes. Are you excited? <laughs> That's so good. It looks like the Aussie soccer player when he got into the World Cup. Oh, well, give us a big smile. I did guess one of the wires because I couldn't remember. We tested it yeah, originally when we, when we put this. We actually got the... Because, once again, I don't know why these, these manuals are so useless, but it didn't tell you which one of these pins was up, down, and yeah, power. Yeah. So we actually used a multimeter with a continuity test yep. and probed it, and we figured out which yeah, was which, yeah. yep. but then I forgot because we didn't write it down, so then I guessed and then it wasn't, so. <laughs> Man, so look at that, look at that. Awesome. Right, stand up on the front, see if you can warm it up. Watch right. you don't trip on that hatch. All right, can you reach over the front with that? Oh yeah, God, that's all you want. Right, that's up. Oh, I even got up and down the right way. Yeah. Up. up. And down. 
Amazing. Amazing, mate. Wow. That is absolutely cool. You wouldn't cool. want to be asleep in your bedroom, though, because that clicking's... I don't, I don't think... Look at the light flashing there. Wow, the yeah. light, the uh, the light inside the electrical cabinet. That's how much draw this thing's got. Right, oh, cool. Yep. Yeah, wait, wait a sec. Oh no, so we've got a circuit breaker here, 150 amp circuit breaker. We're just going to blow that. All right, I'll give it a go. Will it work? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, you've done a good job. Well done. Right, eh? Get back to work. <laughs> Next thing. Amazing. And taking advice from one of the guys that watches this, he said, I install these things for a living and we had a battery protect linked up to this. And he said, remove that. A 220 amp battery protect. This has got what the size of circuit breaker on it? 150. 150 amp, amp circuit breaker. It's not capable apparently. And it's been a problem with the battery protects to handle the load of the windlass. So Zach has, what did you, what did you do? Did you end up rerouting it all? Yeah, we rerouted it. So it goes from straight from the links uh, into a separate 300 amp bus bar. Yep. Uh, and then straight to this circuit breaker. And then the battery protects um, comes off that 300 amp bus bar yep. and still goes to the bilge pumps um, and a couple of other things there. So we've still got the voltage protection yeah, and yeah. stuff for that. Yeah. But these are just protected by the circuit yeah. breakers. Yeah. I think it's probably because with these, um, they're gonna if it's the anchor's stuck on the bottom and it's really drawing hard, it might draw that whole 150 amps yeah. really quickly, yeah. um, and it just might be too much. Yeah. Uh, so, and from what yeah. we're told, it's something to do with the solid state um, MOSFET relay. It mm. just can't handle that really serious load. So, yeah. oh mate, do it one more time. Go on. There you go, guys. Muir, Muir, Australia. Thank you, boys. Awesome. Well done, Zach. I'm Jeez. stoked. How good is that one?